Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Evan and in today's video, I want to take a look at the latest release or the latest updates, the June 2020 updates to Lightroom Classic and see what the new features are that have been added and how we can use these new features to help improve and speed up our workflow. All right, so let's get into Lightroom and take a look at some of these features right now. So here we are in Lightroom and let's take a look at some of the changes, the updates that have been done. Um, the first thing I wanted to take a look at some of the UI interface changes and prominently let's go into the develop tab and the develop tab if you go right here into the tone curve area you're going to see that there is a bit of a UI change here in the tone curve the curve and all the settings for the curve are still the same however you're going to notice that instead of having the parametric curve and also having the point curve where you had to click down here to select the point curve everything has moved and this first icon up here is your parametric curve and then this is your point curve and then also you have your three channels your rgb curves right up here when you right click in here you'll see that there's a few more new options that have been added uh, to reset channel we said all channels snap to the grid um, also copy channel settings if you want to copy one channel to the other um, these are new changes that have been just been added as well so the other change i want to take a look at is if you go into the hsl slash color tab right here you're going to see that in the hsl tab that nothing much has really changed everything still remains the same however if you go down into the color tab you're going to notice that a lot has changed the ui again everything is still the same but the ui has changed so if you click here you see that now you have individual access to all the colors in this circular tab instead of the regular or the older rectangular buttons that we used to have here depicting the colors now you have this beautiful um, colored circles representing each of the colors so you can go ahead and select each of the colors and you can adjust the hue saturation and luminance if you select this last circle here you get all of the colors as well as all the three parameters to change for each of the colors listed in this manner right so that's basically the most um, noticeable interface changes that I really want to talk about um, the other improvements in terms of performance that you may notice is in the library module so let's go into library and in the library let me pick maybe a folder that has a lot more images so I'm going to pick this shoot right here and let's go into grid mode and if if you go into grid mode what you will notice is that right now when you scroll through the grid mode images it is now considered to be more responsive than before so you will have more um, responsiveness and it seems to move a lot more faster um, when you're browsing through the grid mode also you will see improvements when you're searching through your catalogs and stuff like that that now the performance has been improved and it's a lot more responsive than before Awesome. We're going to go back into the develop tab and I want to show you guys um, a few more items that have been added in this June 2020 release of Lightroom Classic. Whenever you made adjustments in the older versions, um, the Lightroom was updating both this navigation window here as well as the strip menu down here or the thumbnail strip here as at the same time but now what you're going to notice is that as you make these adjustments uh, take a look at the thumbnail the thumb strip down here as well as the preview in the navigator window up here and what you're going to notice is that as i go through and i make the changes you only see the change happening in the main preview window here um, but the thumbnail and the navigation window is not going to get updated until i let go right so as soon as i let go you're going to see those two get updated um, this has been done so as to improve responsiveness and performance whilst you're editing um, so as you can see that's how it works as i drag through it and make the change the change doesn't happen until you let go of the of that slider or release the mouse right so that's one of the also the performance improvements that have been done all right so now let's talk about some of the key features that has been added in the June update of Lightroom Classic 2020.
So the, one of the features I want to highlight is one of the new features that have been added into the uh, targeted adjustment tools or the local adjustment tools. Um, those are basically the brush tool, the radial filter, and as well as the um, the gradient filter here where you can draw in your gradients. Um, what's going to happen is now if I click on this brush tool, you're now going to see in the middle here a new section for hue. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to demonstrate to you quickly how this works. So if I take this brush right here, let me reset everything. Um, and if I start to paint, I'm going to paint somewhere here within the blues here. And if you want to see the mask, just all check this uh, show overlay. And maybe let me just bring up my, looks like my brush flow. Let me bring my flow to 100%. And I'm going to select this blues in the sky somewhere, somewhere here just as um, a test and what you're going to notice now is that with this selection or this paint brush done i can now go in here take the hues and begin to shift the color so let me hide the mark so we can see what's happening uh, and i can begin to shift the colors with that um, and if you hold down alt right you can make finer adjustments to the hue uh, or you can just check this box here that says use fine adjustments and it will make minor changes or smaller increments in the hue changes that you're making uh, this is so cool because if you're editing a portrait or something right now in lightroom you don't need to go to photoshop if you want to make minor color adjustments or color changes you could easily mask out that piece of fabric or, or the dress and conveniently change the color right here within Lightroom without having to go to Photoshop. So you can make a selection anywhere you want. Let me select this building here as an example. And if I want to change that hue, I will just shift the hue, right? Um, and this is happening because I selected both of them at the same time. But if you want, you can go up, create a new mask, um, select something else right here. And then I can just shift that color only, right? And and there you go. You can make that shift within the colors. Right, there we go. So you can you can create some cool stuff with this new feature, especially if you're editing portraits or you're editing products and you want to um, shift some colors around or, or change some colors. This gives you that ability to do that right here within uh, Lightroom. Obviously, this landscape photo was not the best example, but I just wanted to show you how you can now use this new hue slider here within the targeted adjustment tools to make color changes um, right here within Lightroom. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and reset everything that we've done because uh, I don't want to keep that. So the next feature I want to talk about is right here. Uh, let's go up and take a look first. I get out of the brush tool. So when you import an image, you're always going to see that the image has this profile Adobe color assigned to it. Now you have the option to change this and have a different profile applied to the image uh, based on the camera profiles. So let's go up into the preferences. So let's go here to Lightroom Classic. Uh, let's go to preferences. And in the preferences, if you go to the presets tab, you see that now you have this option here called the master Adobe default. You can now change this. So if you go ahead and click on the override master settings for specific camera, now I can go down here and then just select my Sony a7 III or let's say I'm shooting with the a6400. I will select my a6400 and I will choose a default for that camera. And I'm just going to say, let's say camera settings for this one and call create. That has now created a default for any pictures that I import that is from the Sony a6400. I can add more profiles. So I can go ahead and add on 
um, one for my Sony a7 III as well. And if I don't want to use the camera settings, I can go down in here, uh, select presets and select any of my presets that I have, or even the defaults. These are the new defaults that have been added that we'll talk about and just apply that if i don't want that and i want the black and white i can select that from here and by default any image that i import from my a7 III will automatically inherit that settings from here so i'm going to leave these two as is and you can keep on and add on as many cameras uh, as long as they're in your list right so you can also change the master default here if you don't want the adobe default uh, you can also change that to your camera settings or you can select your own import preset that you create and have that be there. All right, so that's how you can now change that Adobe color that gets applied by default to your camera specific settings or, or whichever one you choose, right? So let's close this out and, and look at the next feature. So the next feature I want to um, share with you guys is the um, adaptive ISO preset. So for example, let me take this image here uh, let me bring up the info for this image and as you can see here this image right here was shot at ISO 100 if I take a look at the second image this second image here was shot at ISO 3200 so let me just select this first image here and select the second image here and I haven't done any adjustments to this image straight out of the camera I'm going to go down into the here. I think my lens collection is uh, um, my lens correction is enabled. I'm going to turn off lens correction. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to now go into the details tab and I want to apply some luminance noise reduction to this image. Now this image I shot at ISO 3200. So I'm going to probably bring up my luminous noise reduction just for this purpose, set it up to somewhere around, let's say 50. Right. So we've applied a noise reduction of about 50 to this image. Uh, let me take my sharpening up to maybe 80 for this image. Um, mask it a little bit, right? Somewhere around here. Right, and I'm going to click on the next one. And on that next one, which was shot at ISO 100, I'm going to bring my luminance noise level down to a zero. I'm going to leave it down there. My sharpening, maybe I'm going to leave it around 40. Uh, the default, that is fine. So we've done two things. We've had this image that we've um, bumped up the noise reduction, whereas this one and the, and the sharpening, for this image that was shot at 3200 ISO, this image that is shot at 100 ISO, we've left everything as default. Uh, the only thing that I want to probably turn off here is also uh, turn off my lens correction as well. Um, so leave that image just like that. Um, the thing I can do now is to create a preset. And now you can see down here that I can just name this preset, let's say um, adaptive noise reduction. Okay, now if I go through and um, check whatever I need to check, I'm going to uncheck all of this just for the sake of this because there's nothing that I'm really doing, all I'm going to do is leave the process and I'm going to check the noise reduction and luminance as well as we also think, I think we also did some sharpening, where's the sharpening, sharpening right here and I'm going to create this preset but before you create that preset, you're going to see this new option here that says create ISO adaptive preset and I'm going to check that box. So I'm now going to go ahead and click on the create button. Now, one thing to note before we go ahead is that for this to work or to have this option, so you need two or more images selected to be able to use this option to so go ahead, create. And now I'm going to take these two images and let's do a reset. Let's just do a reset on that. Select this one and let's do a reset. 
So if we go into our presets, the user presets, you're going to see the adaptive noise reduction uh, preset that I just did down here. Now, this is the ISO 100 image. If I apply this preset, you're going to see that nothing has happened because that's what we set for it at ISO 100. If I go up to this image right here, which was shot at ISO 3200 and I apply that adaptive preset, you're going to see that the luminance and the sharpening has happened. Now, what happens if I now apply it to an image that was shot outside of these two ISO limits? So this image right here was shot at ISO 400. Let's see what happens when I apply the same preset to it. So now when I apply that to this image here, what you're going to see now is that the sharpening level is at 55. The noise reduction level is at 20. And if you look at this image right here at ISO 3200, for the same preset applied, the amount of sharpening is at 77. The noise reduction is at 20. And because ISO 400 is in between those two, the preset or Lightroom has automatically adjusted and compensated for that um, ISO levels and adjusted the noise leveling and sharpening for the image up, um, as needed. All right. So that's so cool. Um, I see this being used a lot for um, highest ISO images, especially when it comes to sharpening and noise reduction. Um, this is a cool feature to have where you can dynamically apply the same preset, but it will um, work based on your ISO um, setting that you shot with. So guys, that's it. That's all the features I wanted to share with you today. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think about these features and how you're going to use them in your workflow. Thanks again for watching. Consider subscribing and as usual, stay blessed and keep creating.